Next question is from Mini Fig. I know Sal has talked about being an intuitive eater. How do you go about staying in shape, cutting or bulking without counting calories? Okay, so if so, first off, this is a, a long process. It's a process of of really because here's the thing: we all, most of us, have assigned really one value to food, which is how enjoyable is it to eat that food, just from a from a hedonistic uh, viewpoint. So, if you and your friends, for example, are discussing where to eat. Usually, you're, the thing you're considering is which one is going to sound the best right. and the most fun. You know, oh, let's go Mexican. No, I don't feel like that. How about Chinese? Oh, I don't know. Maybe Italian. Yeah, let's all get. And that tends to be the the conversation. And it's it's a result of us living in a, a wealthy society with lots of food and a market that responds to consumers and gives us what we think we want all the time. And so, almost all of our value is placed on <clears throat> just how good the food tastes and how enjoyable it is. Again, from the hedonistic. Viewpoint. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is when it's just that, when that's all I value. So, if that's how I am after you know being on this planet for you know a couple of decades or whatever, I can't possibly intuitive eat because all the value that I place on food is that. So, if I intuitively eat from that standpoint, then I'm going to choose <laughs> what sounds good. Always. What sounds good all the time. Mm, yeah. There's there's no intuition there. My intuition is off. So, what you have to start to do is you really have to start to understand all of the values of food in the truest sense, how they affect your digestion, how they affect your sleep, how they affect your performance, how they make your skin look. Like really look at all, you know, how they make your moods feel. After I eat this, I feel energized. After I eat this, I feel tired. Start to pay attention to all of this stuff and become aware of it. What will end up happening over time is you'll start to find yourself valuing foods for other things aside from just the flavor or the palatability. And you'll enjoy eating them just the same. So like when, when I go on trips with, you know, sometimes, you know, Adam, Justin, myself and Doug will go on these trips and because we're on trips and we're working a lot, our diets aren't the best. We eat out quite a bit. In fact, every meal we'll be eating out. When I'm coming home after five days of this, I'm literally craving vegetables. Now I, I don't, I would not put broccoli or spinach, you know, at the top of my foods I enjoy eating because of the taste list. It's not even in the top 20, right? But I enjoy eating them nonetheless because I've now connected the value of those foods. And how it makes you feel. And how it makes me feel. So I want it. I actually genuinely want it. So that's the process of getting to the point where you can eat intuitively. Now, when you want to eat more, you can eat more to bulk. And you can make food choices based off of all this new information and connections that you've made. So sometimes I eat foods that are very palatable and delicious. Delicious. Other times I may eat something because I notice I feel a particular way or I notice that my body needs something else. But this is a process. It's a process of unlearning what you've learned mm. for most of the time you've been alive. And then it's a process of learning new stuff about food. It's knowledge and uh, you know applied application. It's, it's both of those things. It's a long period to get to that point. It's the black belt level, right? Yeah. After you've gone through the tracking process, after you've gone through you know which foods specifically work best for you, because there's so many foods that are so generally uh, recommended for everybody that may not even be benefiting you, but you haven't done the work to really tease that out. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a matter of getting to that, that point where you can free yourself from having to have so much structure because it's already subconscious. It's already in, uh, you know, a level where, you know, you know how to navigate, uh, based off of whatever environment you're in. Well, I remember when we, we first started talking about this, I, I, struggled with us discussing this before we had the intuitive guide, right? This was before we wrote the intuitive guide. We were obviously already talking about intuitive eating. And I think I struggled the most discussing it because I just, I felt that a majority of the people that I trained in my career just weren't ready for this step yet. Most people are still learning. And I think of it just like learning math or learning a language. Like there are certain steps that you have to do to understand how to speak that language or figure out how to do, you know, whatever math equation. But after you've practiced that enough times, you can begin to start to do that in your head, right? You don't have to sit down and 
write out the the entire equation anymore because you've practiced it so much. You don't have to sound out words anymore. You just speak it because you've probably, but it's to me, it is, it's that nuanced that you have to kind of gone through the tracking process and learning about macronutrients and calories and a difference of a high activity day, a low activity day for you, how your body responds. Once you've kind of started to piece all that together, yeah, then it becomes very easy to be uh, intuitive eating. Just like we think that the ultimate pinnacle of training is uh, intuitive training. You know, the the idea of like going through all the MAPS programs isn't that we force you to do MAPS programs for the rest of your life. It's that once you've gone through kind of all of them, you really understand the fundamentals of training. You've learned what your body responds best to, what programs it did better than other programs on. And then you learn to kind of build that for yourself and adjust it to your day-to-day life. So, you know, before we had released the guide and we would talk about it, I did. I had a hard time communicating that on the podcast because I felt most people really aren't here yet. But there are. There's definitely steps that you want to take in the direction of of working towards that. That should be the ultimate goal is I want to get to that place. It is, and it's a process. It's and I think it's always a process because constant you know, you know, your life's context changes always. You get older, your body changes, your how you respond to your emotions start to change. And so intuitive eating is just it's always a process of kind of listening to your body. It's a it's a process of awareness. And food is just it's one of those challenges that we have in modern times. I mean, if this was 10,000 years ago or 20,000 years ago, this would not be a challenge. You know, we would, food is healthy. And in order to get some of it, I have to move a lot and we don't have a lot of it. And so my problem is, you know, I got to get more food. I need, just need to get more food. That was the big problem. Now we have so much of it around us and in front of us all the time that the challenge now is how do I manage that? How do I manage around all this food? How do I manage myself around? Here's something you should do, step one, if you want to learn how to intuitive eat. It, try to eliminate foods that make it almost impossible to do this. Try to eliminate heavily processed foods. Heavily processed foods are engineered to make you want to eat more. So until you become so aware of the fact that, that of what that feels like, I'd say eliminate those for a little while because those foods make it almost impossible. They're designed to make it almost impossible. And let me tell you something, they win. You will not win unless you get to a very high level of how you feel and understand. Here's another one, how you react, how you eat based on your emotions. I mean, how how aware are people about that when they get stressed or angry or happy, mm-hmm. how they tend to eat? So this is all part of the pro- – look, it's like when you were a kid and you learned how to read. You know, Now as an adult, if I see a word, I immediately know what that word says. But when I was a kid, I had to – Sound it out, you know. I had to sound out every letter. Is before that I could, a metaphor? You know exactly. Yeah. Or is it what they're actually saying? Exactly. 